I was under the impression that there wasn't anything left to add to the conversation directly about Kotaku in this blacklisting news, but based on comments I'm seeing elsewhere, I may have been wrong, so I'm going back to add my thoughts on why I don't believe Kotaku is to be pitied or lauded here. Let's put aside, for the moment, the notion that most of what Kotaku puts out there is toxic waste. Let's work under the assumption that there's no conceivable way that publishers don't want to deal with Kotaku for that reason. Kotaku had an informal arrangement with these publishers in which they would receive gifts and special benefits in exchange for positive press. This is at the very least what Kotaku certainly thinks. They believe that they lost these benefits due to publishing negative press. Now we're at the end of it, yay Kotaku, they stuck it to the man, they're free agents now, rested clean of the Malachian cabal of games press as PR. But here's where they lose the plot. For what should be a breath of fresh air, them finally gaining the right to do respectable journalism unclouded by the PR machine, they treat as a burden. They long to basically be reinserted into the Matrix. They somehow view a lack of gifts and perks from those they cover to be an undue hardship to journalism, rather than, well, the barest requirement of fair coverage. It's not so much a price they've paid, but a wage they've lost. Instead of A Price of Journalism, a better title may have been Money We Wish We Made by Being Better Shills. Now, perhaps it is lamentable that they've lost direct access to these PR statements and such. That is, after all, a big chunk of what passes for news in the world of games press. But it's not an easy journey from where we are to a world where games press is actual journalism. Kotaku falling out of lockstep means little in the grander scheme. What we've got right now is basically a prisoner's dilemma writ large, where everyone is defecting to publishers all the time at the cost of journalism. The solution to the prisoner's dilemma is coordination. The only one with that power is the consumer. Should readers figure out how to say, no, we've no interest in press that can only be positive. Gaming media will change, and poor Kotaku won't be so alone out there in the wilderness. That's really the only answer. Of course, isn't that itself just another coordination problem? Well, we'll have to wait and see. As a closing note, I found it amusing that due to Penny Arcade's negative coverage of Kotaku, Kotaku has decided to no longer feature their comic in a Sunday column that they apparently have wherein they feature comics. This, they say, is not blacklisting, as they might still report on Penny Arcade-related news. I'm fairly certain that the Penny Arcade guys couldn't care less. This charming lack of self-awareness is really what keeps me coming back to Kotaku. Not to ever actually read their site, of course, but to laugh at them. 